Hello, and welcome to TMC's How To Demo Series for Dynamics 365 Business Central, where we explore the features of Business Central for basic tasks within your organization. If you can't find a demo you're looking for, let us know in the comments below and we'll try to make it happen. Today, we're going to begin with basic workflows in Dynamics 365 BC. In part one of this workflow video, we'll cover the basic components of the setups. In part two, we'll walk through an example. My name is John Hoyt, Solution Specialist for TMC. Let's get started. In this video, we'll begin with the basics of the workflow module, the workflow templates, the workflow setups, conditions, and responses, and the approval user setup. Let's see how this works. So I'll start by bringing up my BC system. And we'll use the search function. And first, we're going to look for the workflow templates. Out of the box, BC ships with all of the different workflow templates that you see here, organized into the different sections. They are pre configured for the most part. There's still going to be a little bit of configuration you'll need to do on your end, uh, but a lot of that is simply determining the conditions and the participants that you're going to need to work with. In today's example, we're going to be talking about the purchase order invoice approval. And once we get that drawn up in part two of the video, we'll go through and see how it actually functions. To create a new workflow, you can just click on the new button here. Say I want to create a new workflow from a template. Select the template that you want to use. That's the starting point. And let's turn our attention now. We'll take a look at one of the existing workflows in my system, and we'll see the details that go into that. So in my demo company, I've got five workflows set up or created, but only have one currently enabled, one that's currently in use, and that's the purchase invoice approval workflow. I've got a couple others I could use if I need it on the customer side, item side, things like that. In this case, let's drill down into the details of that enabled workflow, purchases invoice approval. The code name simply got created based upon the template when I built this. There's no reason to change that. You can leave that the way it is. Description, just so we can find it in the list. The categories, these will correspond to those same groupings that we saw in the workflow templates. Where do you want to put this? So just from a management perspective, so they're organized properly. The enabled, yes or no, and you have to have them unenabled or disabled in order to make edits or changes, but they won't function until they've actually been enabled. And then down below, you can see the different steps or the different when events. That first column is basically telling the workflow if something is found, a when event. So it's been delegated, it's been rejected, it's been approved, etc. Next, column, the second column, are where I specify the conditions under which I want that when event to trigger a workflow approval. Uh, in some cases, you may want to do it consistently. Under all circumstances, every time someone wants to create a new vendor, I want that approval process to take place. In other cases, you may create some specific conditions under which you want. In other conditions, if they don't heat, reach your threshold, you can let them go forward. And then a response. If that condition has been detected, what do we want to have happen next? And I'll give you an example of a couple of those. The very first one here, the condition, a purchase approval is requested. Well, under what circumstances, under what conditions? I can select document types. One or more document types could trigger this off particular status that I have enabled somewhere in the system. I can also do some restrictions, a specific vendor, a specific payment term, specific currency code. Maybe I want all my foreign exchange transactions to go through a workflow approval process, etc. Once I've defined the conditions then, I want to specify, okay, then what happens next? And in this case, with the creation of a new approval workflow, 
I have four responses. The first one simply adds in a record restriction. That's predefined out of the template. We're putting the document on hold pending approval. Don't do anything else. Second step is that step to set the status of the document now to pending approval. Third step, we're going to create a request and deliver that request out to the appropriate people based on these options. Uh, do we want a confirmation message to go out to the user to let them know that the approval request has been created? When is that request need to be completed? What's the due date formula? When to delegate the approver type? That could be a specific named approver. It could be a relationship. It could be a defined role in the organization chart. These conditions on the response then determine who's going to be notified, what they're going to see, what they can see when they do something. And then finally, as the third part of our workflow approval video here in part one, you're going to need to define who in your organization is going to be participating in these workflows. And we do this with the approval user setup. I've gone through here and I've created a couple of basic relationships. My VC demo user is the user that I will need to create and request an approval. That VC demo is then approved by my global admin user. That global admin user has the abilities to approve unlimited amounts. I've included the email addresses to communicate with these people so that the notifications will get delivered to the appropriate inboxes, et cetera. This is a very basic setup in the approval users. Most real world situations will involve more people with more activities, et cetera. We do include the ability to then test the users as you're setting them up to make sure they've been configured properly. You also have options to go through and do the notification setups under what circumstances, how frequently, just one recipient, all the recipients, et cetera. All that will go through as part of the approval user setups. Now, with that, let me back out of Business Central again. So, in this video, we looked through the basic components of the workflow module the templates, the setups, and the approval users. In part two of this video, we'll walk through the steps in completing a workflow approval. That wraps up this video. If you have any questions or would like to make a suggestion on what we should cover in the next video, please comment down below. I'll do my best to answer your comments. And if you need immediate technical support, I invite you to visit our website, www.abouttmc.com. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel.